A colleague from the San Antonio Trauma Center texted me and said, why are pediatric surgeons and anesthesiologists on call for a mass shooting in Uvalde? Dramatic testimony from Uvalde's only pediatrician on what parents and students will now remember from Rob Elementary in the future. More on what he had to say and what an 11 year old victim told the lawmakers is next. It was some awfully powerful testimony on Capitol Hill as victims of the deadly Uvalde shooting and the recent Buffalo grocery store shooting relived the drama, each with their own story of loss, trauma and call for change. The testimony hard to hear, especially the first hand account from one of the first on the scene, Uvalde pediatrician. We warn you, the picture he paints is graphic. Two children whose bodies had been pulverized by bullets fired at them, decapitated, whose flesh had been ripped apart, that the only clue at their identities was a blood splattered cartoon clothes still clinging to them, clinging for life and finding none. I could only hope these two bodies were a tragic exception to the list of survivors. But as I waited there with my fellow Uvalde doctors, nurses, first responders, and hospital staff for other casualties we hoped to save, they never arrived. All that remained was the bodies of 17 more children and the two teachers who cared for them, who dedicated their careers to nurturing and respecting the awesome potential of every single one. Among those who somehow were saved in that carnage, Maya Cerillo, and she testified today on what she had to do to survive the gunman. He shot my friend that was next to me, and I thought he was gonna come back to the room. So I grabbed the blood and I put it all over me. Her words piercing members of the Bipartisan Committee on Oversight and Reform. We also heard from her father. I thank y'all for letting me be here and speak out, but I wish something will change. Somewhere out there, there is a mom listening to our testimony, thinking I can't even imagine their pain not knowing that our reality will one day be hers, unless we act now. That was the family of a young girl, Lexi Rubio, who also was killed. So much powerful testimony in Washington today. Our own Lee Waldman was there to hear it all in congressional chambers, and she joins us live now from the Capitol. Uh, Lee, a, a couple of questions for you. Now, we know you're, uh, you're waiting to see if you might be able to get a chance to talk to some of the witnesses from Uvalde, the doctor, the father, or even Maya, but uh, just wondering if you were able to see them either enter or come out of that hearing room after they spoke and what their demeanor was this morning. Well, we were able to see Dr. Guerrero as he was led into the congressional chambers to prepare for that hearing. He uh, was followed by a small posse, was led in with a police officer as well. They took the father of Maya Cerillo out a back entrance. Now, he kept his head down. We tried to ask questions, but he didn't respond to any of our, our questions. He walked far away from us in the hallway. Uh, you can tell there was some sadness after, after he testified. He, he knew he was going to leave after that testimony, but his testimony was powerful in itself. You can feel the emotion coming from him, even just watching it on your screen. Lee, we have uh, been watching this all morning long. It, it, it just hurts your heart, uh, a lot of what we've heard. Um, we probably have never heard that kind of graphic description of what happened in Uvalde. I take it the people who were around you had to be affected as we were. There was definitely, you could feel the sadness um, once you hear it, especially that pediatrician talking, um, the pediatrician sharing that the children's bodies were so ravaged by bullets that they were decapitated. You couldn't identify them. Um, we saw a congresswoman from California actually leaving the chambers in tears. Her name is Katie Porter. And she said to us, I have a fourth grader. I have a fourth grader. And that's all she said as tears were streaming down her face. You could feel the sadness from other reporters as, as they're listening and, and trying to get a grasp of what happened. We had an idea 
I want to take you back to May 24th. We were outside of the Civic Center. We knew that the DNA swabbing was happening inside of that building, but we didn't know to the extent that that was actually needed until we really heard from Dr. Guerrero today. Lee, we heard this powerful testimony, tears flowing, gut-wrenching. But could you tell whether these representatives really took it all in and, and they're ready to actually get something done when it comes to, comes to gun control? We spoke with some of the Congress members as they were leaving their hearing chambers and, you know, they're all saying we're pushing for change. We know something needs to change. There's always hope. But whether that will actually happen is still a coin toss at this point. They said they're going to push their colleagues in the Senate as well to try and, and have some concrete changes. The changes that Lexi Rubio's parents asked for in their virtual testimony, the changes that we heard the, the doctor call for as well. But whether something definitive is actually going to happen, that's still unclear at this point. Thank you so much, Lee Waldman, reporting live for us there in Washington, D.C. We're so glad she's there to witness this all for us and bring it home to us. Important topic that's being discussed in Washington. And as that happens and the wheels of possible change are happening at the Capitol, funeral services unfortunately continue for the victims of the Robb Elementary School mass shooting. Services are getting underway for 10-year-old Annabelle Rodriguez. Her family says she was a sweet young girl whose favorite color, blue, especially on butterflies. She also enjoyed watching TikTok and spending time with her sisters and family. Annabelle services will conclude with a ceremony at Hillcrest Cemetery. In the meantime, within just the last hour, U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland announced the Justice Department will begin its review into the Robb Elementary mass shooting. Our Jonathan Cotto is live with a breakdown of what the Justice Department will be focusing on. Jonathan? David and Ursula, we're learning the role the Department of Justice will be playing in this critical incident review of the mass shooting in Uvalde, where 19 students and two teachers were killed. And now we know this comes as a request made by the mayor of Uvalde, Don McLaughlin, um, who says he hasn't received any information or updates on the investigation in over a week. We've learned the school district's police chief, Pete Arredondo, did not show up at yesterday's city council meeting. Now, the critical review was announced late last month after growing concern and frustrations on the delayed police response at Robb Elementary where the gunman spent nearly an hour inside a classroom while police waited in the hallway. Now the attorney general says the team is comprised of law enforcement experts who have worked on a number of incidents to include the Virginia Tech shooting, the Orlando Pulse nightclub shooting in 2016, the Boston Marathon bombing and the shooting at the Aurora Colorado movie theater. Let's take a listen. So this kind of behavior is obviously is behavior that we will not tolerate. Threats of violence and actual violence against the justices, of course, strike at the heart of our democracy, and we will do everything we can to prevent them and to hold people who do them accountable. For that reason, last month, I accelerated uh, the protection of all the justices' residences 24-7. Also last month, I met with the marshal of the court. I, I, I uh, convened a meeting with her as well as with the deputy director of the FBI, with the director of the Marshal Service, um, and with our own uh, law enforcement, our own uh, prosecutors, to ensure every degree of protection available as possible. Now, the attorney general says the team assigned to conduct this review is already on the ground and is working, and they expect full voluntary cooperation. He also says that a full report will be made public at the end of it all, and he says and reminds everyone that this will not be a criminal investigation. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Hopefully we will learn more. Meantime, new at noon, firefighters investigating a fire on the city's south side. Officials looking at the possibility that the cause of the fire is arson. Katrina Weber has more on the way investigators think this fire is suspicious. When fire broke out near the corner of Vincent and Palo Alto around four this morning, San Antonio firefighters moved in. They soon found out, though, that outside was where they were needed. It appeared that somebody had uh, started a fire on the outside and uh, it had traveled, got into the walls and into the attic a little bit. Crews put out the flames within minutes. What was burning should have been a vacant home. We had reports of people have been, been evicted earlier a couple weeks ago. 
and the house was all boarded up. Trying to figure out who was there this morning was a job left to fire investigators. Sam Perales arrived a bit later after seeing it all on surveillance cameras inside his gym next door. Thank God it didn't, it didn't get it and nobody got hurt and you know our business didn't get hurt. Perales is grateful to firefighters. He says his cameras captured how the fire came to light, showing neighbors waking up due to a food delivery driver in the area. When they came out to see who ordered the DoorDash, um, that's when I think the neighbor, they kind of saw the flame. Perales says with the fire literally in his backyard, he doesn't know what would have happened had it not been for those neighbors waking up and calling 911. They got here fast. And for him, those firefighters were right on time. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Even we, an overnight fire, you know it's just hotter and blazes out I there. I feel for the firefighters. Yeah. I feel for anybody that's having to work outside at this point. Yeah, all those folks that are having to deal with this incredible heat. It's, it's tough, and temperatures are already jumping up close to 90 this afternoon. Right about where we've been the last couple days. So as you might imagine, the, the temperatures will probably rise above 100 this afternoon. Let's look at the numbers right now. Uh, we are looking at uh, 90, 89 at the airport with the heat index around 92, uh, 90 in New Braunfels with a heat index close to 95. And uh, the satellite picture shows that we do have an outflow boundary trying to work south. But with high pressure and control, there's no rain developing along the outflow boundary, which is unfortunate. It is trying to move in our direction, but I don't think we see anything from this. So our KSAT 12 hour forecast, 99 degrees by 3 p.m., 101 at 4 o'clock. And we should top out close to around 102, a little quote unquote cooler than yesterday. We got up to 104 yesterday. 100 at 6 o'clock, 97, 7 p.m. A couple things we're looking at the aquifer. Where do we sit there? Uh, also, we talk about the tropics a little bit. That is coming up here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. Also, coming up in a few minutes, Larry Ramirez. He's going to be talking about Bill Mickelson and the PGA and that new controversial pro golf tour. If you're trying to beat the heat at a city pool, you might be limited where you can go because of the lack of lifeguards this summer. We're going to tell you how you can find a cool spot by a pool that does have someone on duty to keep your family safe. Unfortunately, our weather is on repeat today and it's going to be for the rest of the week. This kind of continuous heat has a lot of people searching for a cool spot. If you're looking at city pools for relief, though, you're probably out of luck. The majority of city swimming pools remain closed. And it's because there's not enough lifeguards on the job. Right now on our website, though, we have a list of the pools and the splash pads that are open. All you have to do is head over to KSAT.com and look for this story. When the middle number on all your temperature forecasts is zero. You know you're in trouble. <laughs> Can't be good. <laughs> We want less than three digits uh, for that. Good. Answer, Please. It's going to be a while, I think, before we get there. Yeah, you see the clear skies, and this is this is a situation we've been in each and every day. The aquifer, boy, it's in bad shape. It got down below 640 today, 639.5, down over a foot again, and this thing is dropping like a rock, and that is uh, well below average. In the pollen counts, just molds and grass, 330 and 10 respectively. We'll talk about this stretch of triple digit heat. Is there any end in sight and what's going on in the tropics? Any relief there? That forecast is coming up. Okay, let's talk about temperatures here the last, uh, well, last month and this month. In May, you see all the records we set. We know what, uh, what May was like. Very, very hot, well above average. The hottest May on record, in fact. And now as we head into June, we've been above average every single day. We've set a record the last three days, and we're in line to set a record again today. 11 record highs in total in May and June. So what a stretch we're going through, and there's... Very little uh, little hope as we go. I don't want to say hope. Okay, there's very little chance that we're going to see temperatures drop off much from where they are now. The hope is, though, maybe down the line that uh, we can get some tropical moisture in here or, or something that changes pattern a little bit. 
uh, because we need that uh, the way things are going and the aquifer as I mentioned dropping and these temperatures continue to really jump up. There's a look at the time lapse clouds cleared out 89 degrees at the airport. South southwesterly winds at about 11 miles per hour. Dew point is at 67. 89 at the airport feels like 92. 86 burning stage feels like 87. 90 in New Braunfels feels like 95. Uh, even in game feels like 93 at this point. The dew point trend. Well, I do think the dew points drop off a little bit, so we won't have a, a huge heat index today, but at least for the next few hours, we will probably be dealing with some sort of a heat index before dew points jump back up again tonight and into tomorrow morning. Satellite picture shows any sort of cloud cover has gone away. There are still some clouds off to our east, but I'll show you that we have a line of, of clouds, and that's along an outflow boundary for some storms earlier across North Texas that is working south. But what you'll notice here, there are no storms along this boundary. Usually this time of year, if you get a boundary like that, you get some storms blowing up right along it. But high pressure strong enough to kind of squash everything. We'll see if anything can get going there, but uh, we're not too hopeful. And this thing is working in our direction. We'll keep rain out of the forecast today. Up north, they got a good dose of rain across parts of the Texas Panhandle and Oklahoma. Still some severe weather there this afternoon in Oklahoma and parts of Arkansas. And as we look at our forecast here, high pressure again kind of steering everything around us. And this high pressure does try to move a little bit. By next week, it moves east. That just opens up the door for more humidity. So while temperatures may come down a little bit, humidity goes up. And we're just uh, trading the, the air temperature for a heat index. It's probably a little bit higher. It's going to be hot either way you look at it. Uh, let's talk about the tropical forecast here. Now, this is from the Climate Prediction Center. And for the stretch of June 15th through June 21st, they have moderate confidence of some tropical development somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico, maybe the Caribbean. This will be something to watch. The models are still all over the place and we don't have a good grasp on what may happen. Just something to watch. And as we said, it's probably going to take some tropical moisture to break this kind of heat wave here. We'll see how that plays out. Forecast temperatures today, we make it up to around 102 this afternoon. A lot of places, again, up over that 100 degree mark. It'll feel maybe a degree or two warmer than that with the humidity. And the extended forecast 101 Thursday, 102 Friday. Saturday, probably our warmest day, 104. 103 Sunday, and still some triple digits going into next week. Maybe the heat drops off just a little bit by the middle part of next week, guys. Looking for some hope here. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> One thing about it, these two teams can't be whining about not getting enough rest in between games. Gee, many yeah, and this, like two and six or something like yeah, that. Yeah, this series is going to really stretch out if it goes yeah. to complete seven with all the off days in between. So coming up, it is game three of the NBA Finals tonight. And one key for Boston is to limit turnovers. So Steph Curry hopefully is kept in check. Plus, Phil Mickelson isn't the only pro golfer that's leaving for the Live Tour. Coming up. Served a ban or are serving a ban with the PJ Tour? I I um, choose not to speak publicly on PJ Tour issues at this time. Phil Mickelson would neither confirm nor deny that he's been suspended or banned by the PGA Tour for joining the Live Golf Tournament and Big Board Sports. NBA Finals will resume tonight with Game 3 between the Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics. The series is tied at 1-0. Boston won Game 1, 120-108, to and Golden State took Game 2, 107-88 to to head to Boston with a split. During the regular season, the Dubs were 22-19 and on the road, and so far in this postseason, they're 3-4 and in away games. Steph Curry and the Warriors have won many road games in the playoffs, and they feel they can get the job done again at Boston. Be in hostile environments where you get tested, you get pushed, you know, and our experience kind of shows at the right time. So obviously in this situation, it's a must for us to uh, win a championship and we got to be up for that task. In the Celtics game two loss at San Francisco, they turned the ball over 19 times, resulting in 33 points for the Warriors. In game one, they only turned it over 13 times, leading to 10 points. That's a huge difference and something the Celtics will focus on. You know, you just think if you could limit those turnovers, you could limit a lot of those points. Uh, and yeah, I 
the stat about, I mean, basically, we don't turn the ball over. You know, we give ourselves a better chance to win. That's not rocket science. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, doing that more often than not. Game three is tonight at 8 in Boston. Game four is Friday night at 8. And game five will go down Monday night, 8 p.m. at Golden State. All games are live right here on KSAT 12. Phil Mickelson is part of a 48-man field for the Upstart Live Golf League that will hold its first event this week at the Centurion Club outside London. Live Golf is supported by the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, which is controlled by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who has been accused of numerous human rights violations. It's been reported that PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan recently told player agents that players had to choose whether they were going to play on the PGA Tour or in the Live Golf Series, and they could not play in both. For now, it sounds like Phil will play Live Golf. I've really enjoyed my time on the PGA Tour. I've, um, I've had some incredible experiences, some great memories, and I have a lot of strong opinions on things that should and could be a lot better. One of the mistakes I've made is, is um, voicing those publicly. So I will, I will really make an effort to keep those conversations behind closed doors uh, going forward. I think that's the way uh, to be the most uh, efficient and, and get the most out of it. Dustin Johnson has resigned from the PGA Tour and plans to only play live tournaments and majors going forward. Don't hear Phil measure his words so directly. Yeah, very well, after often. what he said last time, of course, yeah. he got him in trouble. He's very calculated. Wow. All right, Larry, thanks. In the next half hour, the inspiring story of a young woman who overcame life's challenges to achieve her goal of becoming a college grad. It's the latest installment of our great grad series. And also coming up next, health experts say Moderna's highly affected updated COVID-19 vaccine could be a turning point in the nation's fight against the pandemic. That story, once again, next half hour. Now to the latest on the coronavirus. Moderna announcing the results of its updated vaccine that it claims could be a major game changer in the fight against the virus. The pharmaceutical company says the next generation vaccine is much more effective against the Omicron vi variant than the original vaccine. And this is a growing number of Americans appear to be getting reinfected with the virus as new variants emerge. ABC's Rena Roy with the latest. As vaccine immunity wanes in many across the country and fears grow over another COVID surge, Moderna announcing a new version of its vaccine. It has the potential to be a real turning point in this latter part, second half of, of the pandemic. The company saying the updated vaccine is much more effective against the Omicron variant and will likely produce more antibodies several months down the line, creating the roadmap for a yearly vaccine. Given the magnitude of effect, that seven-fold increase in antibody levels, we could, for the first time, be at a vaccine that is truly effective with once yearly dosing. Moderna is so confident in these results, they've already started producing large quantities of the new shot and plan to submit the data to the FDA in the coming weeks so it could be available in the fall if authorized. But White House officials say there may not be enough for every American if Congress doesn't authorize new COVID funding requested by the president. We're losing our spot in, in line while other countries are, are moving forward and buying next generation vaccines for all Americans. Uh, that may be uh, needed in the fall and winter. Data from wastewater in some parts of the country like California and Ohio appear to show a high presence of COVID-19, but in some areas of the Northeast, there are signs the latest COVID surge may be declining. ABC News analysis shows more and more Americans are getting reinfected as new variants emerge. Some states reporting an increasing number of people have gotten the virus anywhere from two to five times. And back to vaccines, Moderna is looking to authorize its pediatric vaccine for kids under six, and they hope the youngest Americans will also eventually have access to this updated shot. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. A man in Indiana has an amazing survival story. He fell 30 feet into a quarry, but lived. Take a look at the video, chopper footage showing crews using a rope to pull the man to safety. It happened at Cooper Lane Quarry in Jeffersonville, Indiana yesterday. Officials say the man 
is a contractor. He's doing some blasting work there. He slipped and fell over the edge. He was taken to the hospital, though, with only minor injuries. And severe weather dropped heavy rains in Oklahoma City. The weight of that rain collapsing the roof of the Supply One warehouse right into the break room. That's where a couple of people were injured. Roads flooded, fire crews using their trucks in some instances to rescue trapped motorists who decided to drive through the high water. Firefighters say they were some reported minor injuries. Life threw her a curveball when her mom got sick, but her difficult times only made her work that much harder. We're talking about our next great grad. It's Alandria Fuller. She just graduated from Texas A&M San Antonio with a degree in business management. Sarah Costa has her story. And I didn't think I was going to be able to do it, staying the night every night at the hospital, back to back. It was tough, but, you know, I stayed through it, and it just pushed me to become stronger to who I am today. Alandria Fuller began her undergraduate studies at Prairie View A&M University, but when her mom got sick in 2019, she transferred to Texas A&M San Antonio to care for her. Her mother lost her vision and her extremities, so caring for her mother has made a huge impact on Fuller's life. I've been taking care of her for some years now, and still graduating and being able to stay on the honors and achieve all these achievements I've here, that I've achieved here, you know, she's proud of me. Fuller won Undergraduate Student Worker of the Year, Senior Distinction, and Outstanding Senior, and that's just in her last semester. She was also involved in a variety of student organizations, such as the Black Student Union and the National Society for Leadership and Success. But her favorite organization she was a part of was the Campus Activity Board because they handled most of the activities on campus. Being involved in campus life really helped Fuller during her difficult balance of life in school and at home. You learn different things. You know, I'm just a 19 year old at the time. You know, you're having to learn how to change somebody or to just change your whole life to stop for one person. And it's, it's difficult at times, but you know, I still push through. Being the first to graduate college in her family was a big motivating factor. And now that she's accomplished that, she hopes to continue to make them proud. I've had some tough four years, you know, so I think me achieving that goal was kind of important to me because, you know, I didn't think I was going to be able to hit my senior year. And me being first generation, it kind of is important, you know, for me to show my family it's possible, even though all the stuff I've been through, you can still achieve those type of goals. Her new goal now is to get an internship or job, and she also hopes to one day work on a clinical trial for medical conditions related to her mother's illness. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam, we're looking for any kind of relief. How about a cloud? Just can't even get that. Give me one cloud. That's all right. <laughs> Uh, some kids are getting relief. Maybe they're heading out to the splash pads today. The, the forecast for that, well, it's going to be up around 102 this afternoon. So we know it's going to be uh, toasty and uh, mostly sunny. Uh, those temperatures, again, around 102. The UV index could be as high as 10 this afternoon. So be careful if you're going to be out there. Here's what's ahead uh, as we look at the headlines. Could this be the fourth day in a row of more record heat? Could we see some tropical development? We talked a little bit about that earlier. And the weekend, Saturday. Potentially the hottest day yet, guys. Thank you, Justin. Still coming up, the Reagan Rattlers getting ready for their state semifinal matchup. Larry Ramirez with a preview. Plus, new research says cannabis products with higher THC than CBD levels may help to ease chronic pain. We have details coming up. In consumer news, prescription cannabis products with higher THC to CBD levels may actually ease uh, your chronic pain. That's according to a new study, but that study has some concerns. Researchers say that the products may also provide uh, small to moderate pain relief, also coming with some side effects that might worry you, including dizziness and sedation. THC is the chemical compound in the marijuana plant that makes you high. CBD is the second most prevalent active chemical in cannabis, but it does not make you high. Both have been associated with pain relief. That said, the study also found there are no pain relief benefits from taking over-the-counter products that have these extracts. Once again, outside with live cam, not a cloud in sight. It's already 91, so find something cool. This would be one of those times when you want those big glass of iced tea. Mm -hmm. You can make your own tea, probably Jum in about 10 minutes. Jumbo size? Yeah, put the tea bags in the jar, set it outside the sun, boom, like instant tea. Three minutes later, <laughs> it's all brewed and there boiling. You go.
Yeah, uh, not a bad idea, honestly. 89 degrees so far today, 77. Uh, the low this morning feels like we're on repeat, doesn't it? 92 is the average will be above average today. The record is 101. That is in jeopardy set back in 1948. We've got a lot more heat on the way. In fact, the weekend we're bringing temperatures up even more. That forecast coming up. What I thought was going to happen to my friends who moved here from Hawaii this yeah. year. Um, is happening. One of them's going back <laughs> next week. It. He's like, I'm done. Wow. Whew. You uh, only stay. How long did he stay? About. Well, he got here right, right when it got hot in May. Mm. Oh, he's already going back. Eh, tell him to stick around for a while longer. Give me like three more summers, and we'll yeah. be back in the rainy oh, pattern okay. again. Thank you. <laughs> three more summers. I'm sure that's uh, a great argument. Well, I don't know <laughs> how well that would go. Three more years of this Hawaii <laughs> surfing. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Uh, speaking of water, uh, the aquifer, where do we stand with that? I mentioned earlier, it dropped to below 640 today. It's a 639.5. The important number, of course, is that 10 day average, which is at 642.7. If uh, we fall below that number, what does it mean? Well, for those who pump in uh, the Edwards aquifer, that means that we potentially could go into stage three restrictions. That's for those dealing with the Edwards aquifer authority. For SAWS customers, that does not mean we go into stage three because uh, the city can choose, city and SAWS can choose not to do that. We can stay in stage two, and that's probably what's going to happen, even if that number drops uh, below the 640 threshold. Still, it's once a week watering, 7 to 11 and 7 to 11. I wrote an article about this on KSAD.com if you want to go check it out with some more information. But that's kind of where we stand. The aquifer is not in great shape, and neither are the rivers and creeks. Look at the Guadalupe River. This is out near Canyon Lake, but boy, that doesn't look good. Water levels are coming down just about everywhere, and as long as this forecast continues, we're going to see more scenes like that one. Outside, blue skies and 89 degrees. Dew point is, is at 67. It's south southwest Julie wind at about 11. Feels like 92. 90 in Kerrville, 87 in Hondo, 93 Pleasant, and 92 down there in Beeville. It is hot no matter where you go, and around Bear County, mostly close to 90 degrees. But you'll see these numbers take some big jumps here in the coming hours. I think we got up up over 100 again today. Yesterday was 104. That was a record. Record today is 101. We'll be right around there this afternoon. Two points are in the 60s, enough there to give us a heat index at this hour, so it does feel just a little bit warmer than that actual air temperature. When it comes to cloud cover, nothing. We got nothing. All the clouds are out there near Houston, and as you go north, we have that outflow boundary. Which again is pretty impressive, but it's just not kicking off any showers or storms because we have that high pressure just causing sinking conditions and suppressing anything from developing. Uh, a lot of storms, though, as you get up across parts of eastern Oklahoma and Arkansas, and that's where there will be more severe weather today. Severe thunderstorm watch box in effect there. And uh, high pressure, you can see it kind of extends east now. And that, uh, again, is just taking rain out of the picture for most of Texas. And it does move around a little bit. It's off to our west over the weekend, but still strong enough to give us some pretty high temperatures here uh, over the weekend. And then it shifts east on uh, Tuesday, but that doesn't really do much for us other than it just helps to bring in more humidity. It's still going to be hot, maybe not as hot, but it'll be more humid. So we'll have heat indices to worry about. Meantime, in the tropics, I mentioned this earlier, but I think it's worth mentioning again. Um, from the Climate Prediction Center, they're looking at the time frame from June 15th to June 21st. They have moderate confidence of perhaps some tropical development down here, the Caribbean, maybe Gulf of Mexico. This is a long way away. Models are kind of all over the place, but it is something to watch. It's still early in the hurricane season, but we've already seen some development out there. KSAT 12 hour forecast 99 at 3 o'clock. We're around 102 by 5 p.m. Still in the 80s by 10 p.m. and even around midnight with a nice breeze. And the extended forecast will go 101 tomorrow, 102 Friday, 104 on Saturday, 103 Sunday. You get the idea. Much of the same, guys. Just incredible. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. So the Cowboys already have problems with some of their players not showing up. Mm -hmm. Surprise. Yeah, uh, tied in. Dalton Schultz, but it's over contract situations, which typically it feels like it's always over a contract situation, right? So yes, Dalton Schultz is a no-show at Cowboys OTAs right now. We'll explain that coming up. And in high school baseball, Reagan is ready to strike at the state tournament coming up. KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA, powered by USAA. 
San Antonio has been called Military City USA and we're showing you why we're at the heart of military training. Operating for nearly 80 years and exclusive to Joint Base San Antonio Lackland is the Inter-American Air Forces Academy, or IAFA. Well, IAFA offers one of the most unique missions in the United States Air Force Arsenal, and that is we provide instruction to our partner nations in Latin America across 32 different courses, all in Spanish. The Inter-American Air Forces Academy has provided world-class education and training to Latin American partners, and here's why. Well, I will say with two words, security cooperation. In an age where our budgets are, are limited and our ability to do things beyond our borders is limited, we need partners. And we need it more than ever next to our borders. So Latin America serves as a very critical strategic point where we need to make friendships, influence uh, uh, partnerships, and of course build such capacity that when needed, we can all operate in the same events, whether it's a hurricane, or any other crisis, we can help each other out. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys tied in. Dalton Schultz is a no-show at Cowboys organized team activities, and he's advised a team he will not participate in any of the voluntary workouts. According to the NFL Network, Schultz is upset that the team and his people haven't been able to come to an agreement on a long-term deal. After signing a franchise tag of $10.9 million, the two sides have until July 15th to come to an agreement. Otherwise, Schultz will have to play under the one-year tender. The Reagan Rattlers baseball team is heading to the state tournament for the first time since 2018. That's after they beat Lake Travis in a best of three series to win the Class 6A Region 4 championship. Aiden Coleman helps build on their 5-0 lead when he hits a grounder to shortstop, but the throw to first is in the dirt, allowing Jacob King to score. The Rattlers take it 6-2 to take decisive game three. Now we caught up with the Rattlers as they prepare to face Rockwall Heath in the Class 6A state semifinals Friday. The last time Reagan went was 2018. Um, we're trying to get it done to 2022. And um, I mean, it's a, it's everybody that's at the state tournament's a good team, and uh, as, as well as us, and I, th I think we're ready. We're gonna go into it, focus on that game, not worry about the next day, and just play as hard as we can for those seven innings, and hope we come up on top. Reagan and Rockwall Heath to play Friday in Round Rock at 7 p.m. and KSAT 12 Sports will be there. In the Class 1A state semis going on right now, DeHennis leads Abbott 4-2 in the bottom of the second inning. Houston Astros right-hander uh, Justin Verlander bounced back last night after he was tagged for six runs and four homers in his last outing against the Mariners. Last night versus Seattle, he struck out a season-high 12 in seven innings and allowed one run on six hits to pick up his win and push his record to 7-2. and two. Slugger Jordan Alvarez smacked a two-run homer in the eighth inning for the final runs of the game, his 17th this season, and the Astros win four. To one. Texas at Cleveland yesterday for a doubleheader. The Rangers lost game one six to three. So we pick up game two in the top of the third where Marcus Simeon drills a solo home run to left field and the Rangers lead two to one. Top of the fourth. Jonah Haim hits his seventh round trip of the season with a solo shot to the home run porch in left field. Part of his two for five effort at the plate and later in the fourth. Nathaniel Lowe joins a home run parade, sending a big fly to center, measured at 415 feet. Simeon would leave the yard again in the eighth. The Rangers win game two, six to three, banging out 12 hits. And in Texas League Baseball, the Missions won at the Corpus Christi Hooks by a final of five to one. You know, Reagan and DeHennis, they got their work cut out for them. They got a little pressure on them after the girls brought home all those trophies. <laughs> little softball team. Yeah, they so, want to add know. trophies to that uh, trophy case themselves for sure. You guys better get after it. Pressure. Yeah. All right. Are you thirsty? Are you hungry? Do you want to have some fun? Look what I've got here. Talking about hungry, it is a juicy Fredericksburg peach. We need to see what we are making. Jeff Leo Gary from Eat Fredericksburg is here and putting all these sliced peaches in a hot skillet, right? What are we That's making it. up here? We're going to make a peach bourbon sundae, ice cream sundae. We're actually using gelato. Okay. Yeah. And the trick to putting peaches in here, how come? Um, we want to get some good caramelization, some good color on those peaches. The more color you get, the more flavor you get. Um, so it just adds to a lot more flavor when you make your ice cream sundae nice and warm. All right, and Fredericksburg's coming to town. We'll tell you about that this weekend. All right, summer camp time out there at the zoo. What's going on, Fiona? <laughs> oh, get ready for a wild time. We're here at the San Antonio Zoo with a peek at all the summer camp fun these kids are having. 
And speaking of summer camp, there's a camp a golf camp for kids right around the corner from the zoo right there. For kids of all ages. And this is not just about learning how to hit par on the golf course, but it's also learning some very important life lessons out there on the links. We're going to take you out there. Hey, want something fun to do this weekend? The Gunslingers. They are back in town. Arena football. It is a whole lot of fun. We're going to be talking to the coach and the quarterback and hear all about the game coming up this weekend. Also, social question, some unusual animals out there at the zoo. Which would you rather cuddle with? We'll tell you your choices coming up on SA Live. It may be June, but it's almost time to get a jump on Christmas. <laughs> really, the immersive holiday light display landscape, lightscape is going to be returning. Oh, it was so pretty at the San Antonio Botanical Gardens. And this is going to happen for this year's holiday season. It better be colder come Christmas. Makes it a little chillier looking at those yeah. people in coats. The officials with the Botanical Gardens said the popular towering cathedral arch tunnel will be back this year and feature installations that haven't been seen here in San Antonio. Tickets on the hugely popular event are going on sale. Garden members can grab their tickets starting at 10 a.m. on Friday and the general public can get theirs at 10 a.m. on Monday, June 13th. It'll run from November 11th through January 8th. For all the details, get your ticket prices and parking, you can head to our website, ksat.com. Just our little effort to make you feel a little cooler. Thank cold thoughts. Cold thoughts. Uh, 102 today, 101 Thursday. By the way, we're already up to 92, so we're well on our way. Uh, 102 Friday, Saturday looks to be our hottest day, 104. But look, uh, every single day is going to be hot. Uh, probably a little more humidity as we get into next week, guys. Mm. Ouch. So what animal from the zoo would you cuddle with? I thought that was a good question for Mike. What would you cuddle well, with? I would love to cuddle with one of their leopards. Have you seen those beautiful yeah. leopards they have? I don't think that would work. I don't think so. And a koala bear would be, looks cuddly, but they're like mean, aren't they? Yeah. So I, I have no idea. I think they bite. <laughs> we'll find out because that's a live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Hello and happy Wednesday while our summer camp week continues and Pete is out there cutting a rug with rhinoceros out there at a camp for young animal lovers at the San Antonio Zoo. Good afternoon everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. Well, I'm holding down the fort here. She's out there at the zoo. Good afternoon, Fiona. What's going on? How are you? <laughs> I need a breather, actually, after that dancing. But yes, we are checking out, of course, the summer camps here at the zoo. And we've got one going on behind us right now that is about misunderstood animals. And that kind of got us thinking, you know, would you rather cuddle a raccoon or a possum? Which one would you rather cuddle? Well, I always feel like raccoons are kind of up to something. They're kind of dressed for that occasion, you know? So I would go with possum. Um, all right, I'd have to say a raccoon, I guess. You know, the little tiny ones and the little mask hey. on them, they're kind of, kind of cute looking and everything like that. So, that's because yes, um, yes, yes. so you're always what, up to something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're always up to something. So, yeah, we want to know what you would want to cuddle with, so let us know. And we're going to learn more about that camp coming up there in uh, just a couple of minutes. But first of all, we are talking peaches. And if you love those Fredericksburg peaches, but, you know, you can't make the trip all the way up into the hill country this weekend. Guess what? All that sweet summer flavor is coming right here to San Antonio and right on camera. Ooh, look at those beautiful, delectable peaches, a little Ooh, bit of delicious. bourbon on top of that. Chef Leo Gary from Eat Fredericksburg, Texas is here to give us a tasty preview of Fredericksburg Peach Fest. Right. Good afternoon. Good to see you, sir. Yeah, same to see you. Same right. Great to see you. I think always. everybody loves when you hear about Fredericksburg peaches. We have the best peaches. Yeah, okay. totally. And it's a pleasure to, when we do have them to make whatever we can with them. So we're making a uh, peach bourbon mm -hmm. sundae. So we're starting off with some uh, peaches in our Fredericksburg cast iron pan and you just put a nice sear on them. All right, and, and that was, it, what, to add, it's like grilling peaches, right? It adds, right. Instead of grilling the them, a little bit. Yeah, I like to do it on cast iron because the peach doesn't stick to the grill. Um, you get more flavor, more flat surface on the pan, so you get more color, more flavor. And then you're making the sauce in there as well, so it's, everything stays in the same exactly, pan, Exactly, right? and the peaches just absorb it. And, of course, we're using Fredericksburg bourbon, and don't forget, yeah. if you're making this for the kids, alcohol does burn off when you put it in a hot pan right. like that. So it just Unless for us adults, we'll put a little bit more in it towards the end. We'll talk more about that yeah, later on. So, so, And this is very simple to do, just a little bit of that bourbon, it's yeah. going to reduce down, mm -hmm. and then sprinkle 
sprinkle some sugar yep. in there. Put the, put the sugar. And just all around, That's and this it. is just going to form all of it? Yep. Okay. No, why not? Okay, sure. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. So, all right. And you said uh, that's going to help out even if the, the peaches may not be at their premium ripeness, that little extra sweetness in there, right? Right, exactly. And it just goes well with the color. It creates more of a, a syrup texture to, mm -hmm. the, to the peach for the sauce. Okay, so and we can just it. let that sit in there yep. for a minute. We'll let it sit. Okay. And um, you, start, you start seeing it bubble up a little bit. Um, you can mix it around. Here's a little spoon or oh, fork. Okay. You can use that little cocktail just spoon. And that's just, it. Oh, okay, you might. And there just you go. and that's as simple as that. It's simple. That's simple. And, and then, then we're putting it over a little bit of uh, gelato. Yeah, yeah. We have some Oro Bianco. Uh, this okay. is gelato that they make um, in Blanco, Texas. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna get a bowl here, scoop it in. Uh, this stuff is amazing, made with uh, water, with buffalo. And then we can just kind of take a couple of these yeah, and put all of it. Huh? Okay, we'll just do Thanks this like this. Us, so. yeah. Okay, so we are talking about Fredericksburg. Oh, let me get that baby in there. Yeah. Right like that. I'll just do go. those Perfect. A couple of right now. Yep, awesome. And that is off. However, you know, it's going to take a lot of peaches at Peach Fest going on here. And, right. you know, what we should look for when we are buying peaches because we have peach experts that are going to be here in town. And Sean Dory, who is the communications manager for Fredericksburg Convention and Visitors Bureau, is here with a little Peach 101. So, Y'all are bringing the peaches down into town, right? That's right. If you can't make it out to Fredericksburg, Saturday is your opportunity to get some fresh peaches, uh, 11 to 6 p.m. at the shops at Lock and Terra. Okay. Now, big question is, how do you pick the perfect peach? <sighs> Everyone's different, right? Taste is taste is in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. um, good news is, we have peach producers from the Hill Country Fruit Council who will be here on Saturday and can help you pick the perfect peach. Okay, say that three times fast, I like the alliteration <laughs> right there. So, all right, big question right. is though, was it a good peach season? It's getting there. It's gonna okay. be a great peach season. We had, uh, we needed a little more rain, but that has just delayed things a little bit. So running two to three weeks behind, but the peaches are really small this year, but they're also very sweet. So. Okay. As yeah. Chef Leo said, they will make the perfect complement to any dish you're making. Right, and, and sugars intensify it with less water, so you have more sugars in your peach. Okay, so goodness is packed into a, exactly. a small, small little package yeah. right there. So what are we making over here? Uh, we're making a uh, peach bellini. So we're using, of course, Burke's Corners. Um, they're in Stonewall. They're fresh peaches, make a puree, a puree with a little bit of uh, peaches and vodka that we also is local, mm -hmm. um, Salvation Spirits. And then um, we're just putting a little bit of pet nut from William Chris, which is a uh, sparkling peach and grape wine. And just makes for a perfect, refreshing summer drink, especially okay. since it's so hot. Now, we always think of peaches in Fredericksburg and some of the bourbon, some of the uh, other bubblies yeah. there. But there's a lot more Fredericksburg produced items, right, that are going to be at the Peach Fest. That's right. We're bringing live music from Lukenbach, Texas. We're bringing mm -hmm. wine from local wineries in Fredericksburg. Uh, Chef Leo mentioned William Chris. We're also Fredericksburg Farms will be there with some of their peach salsas, peach lotions, and peach soaps. Um, and Fredericksburg Pecan Company will have uh, good pecans on hand on Saturday as well. Okay, so you could just kind of uh, meander around there at Lock and Terra, shop a little bit, and taste a nice little. It's a great way to not have to make that that trip up there. So. Well, but if you do want to make the trip okay. up there, we're going to be there with the Convention and Visitor Bureau helping you plan your next trip to Fredericksburg as well. Because it is a great place to go to, and there's a lot going on mm -hmm. up there. So don't forget, the Fredericksburg Peach Fest is happening this Saturday, the 11th, 11 a.m., 6 p.m. up there at the shop at Lock and Terra. Come and enjoy a day of all things peaches and Fredericksburg. And for more information, go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. We got a cheers, though, to Fredericksburg and all the uh, the peaches there. For Gentlemen, sure. mm, salute. Cheers. Ooh, that is tasty. Can't wait to try that dessert. All right. Like we said before, it is our summer camp week, and today we are learning about an incredible experience for young animal lovers, and there are a few places in town where they can get up close and really personal with these wild creatures, and Fiona is out there at the zoo learning more about all these misunderstood animals. What's going on? I'm telling you, Mike, you got to get ready for a wild summer here at the San Antonio Zoo. Kyle Perez, Director of Public Relations, joins me, and right now we have one of those summer camps 
going on behind us, right, Kyle? Oh yeah, they are right behind us in their natural habitat. We are seeing them learn here at zoo camp. It is a fun time every time you come to zoo camp or to the zoo in general. And they are learning about the wild things that are misunderstood here at this camp. Okay, so this is the Twisted Tales summer camp, right? Yes. Okay, so they are learning right now about what? So right now we're talking about the corn snake because corn snakes are here in Texas. So they're freaky, they're snakely, they're scaly. So we might not like them, but why should we like them? Because they take care of a lot of the mice out in the wilderness. And that's what we're learning about here too, is where we shouldn't just misunderstand these animals, that they actually serve a purpose here at Texas. And this is just one of many zoo camps that kids are participating in over the summer, right? Absolutely. So we are also doing our wild careers, which is six to eighth graders. We have kinder through five and six through eight. And in wild careers, we talk to zoo crew members, whether it's marketing, whether it's animal care specialists, they all teach you on what they do every single day here at San Antonio Zoo. And some of it is preparing food for the animals or seeing really exclusive things that not everybody gets to see. And so, you know, these camps, you know, they are sold out for this summer, but you know, what, when do parents need to sign up by if they wanna do this, say next summer for their kids? Absolutely, so early spring, we encourage everyone to get registered early spring because it is a very popular thing. As you can imagine, San Antonio Zoo is a wild adventure every time you come. And so it is a very popular thing to come to our zoo camps and truly experience all the fun nature that exists around us and all the fun wildlife as well. So I suggest that people start out early spring. Okay, and any upcoming events that folks need to know about? Absolutely, so we also have camps during the fall for any like school breaks. So you can still register for those, but fun events happening here, we're doing our summer attraction, which is Planet Earth Deep Sea Adventures, which is happening across the zoo, which is a cool way to experience the zoo in a whole new way. And so the drive-through experience, there's a little bit of change with that. Tell me what that is. Yes, so we went on discounted tickets right now because we realize how hot it can be out there for some of us. And so you can now experience the zoo with a drive-through. Oh, yeah. So you can drive through the zoo, blast your AC, have some nachos, some cotton candy, maybe a Powerade, and just enjoy the animals from the comfort of your car. And now it is discounted tickets, so go to sazoo.org so that you can get it as cheap as you can. Almost kind of like going to a drive-in movie, except you get to drive through the zoo, right? <laughs> Absolutely, yep. And now with Neotropica open, you go underneath the Jaguar, so Ooh. it's even cooler. If you've got that sunroof, that's a whole new experience right there. <laughs> so and so uh, besides the camps, of course, folks can come out and enjoy the zoo and they can have those interactive experience with some animals, right? Like what? Absolutely. So camps have camp exclusives. Mm -hmm. so, so there are some special things for camps specifically. Mm -hmm. But if you just want to come to visit the zoo, you can still have behind the scenes experiences like feeding a hippo, feeding a flamingo, feeding a giraffe, or even getting to give some touchies to a rhino. It truly is an amazing and zoo-unique experience every time you come to San Antonio Zoo, and you'll leave loving animals even more, and that's our whole goal here, is so that you get to engage with them and truly help us secure a future for wildlife. I love that. Okay, so once again, let's remind folks that these summer camps here are sold out, and remember, if you want to sign up for next year, you got to start in the spring, but there are camps coming up in the fall, right? Mm -hmm. that you can start signing up for when? You can start, I believe it's in July, in July. but check so out start, start watching. Okay, all right, and for all that information, all you have to do is head to our website, essaylive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. And don't forget, coming up, we are gonna show you the newest uh, interactive uh, exhibit here at the zoo, so stick around for that. Mike? That's so fantastic, it was fascinating, and so much to do there at the zoo this summer. Thank you very much. All right, we'll see you in just a couple of minutes. All right, still ahead on SA Live, add a little color to your summer where you can find these fun accessories and the event that will have even more cute and colorful items. Plus, professional football is back in the Alamo City where you and your family can catch the game this weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. But first, another terrific camp where you can help your little putter become the next Tiger Woods. Check it out next on SA Live. We'll